ESPN. BYU ranked 19th in the country. Could be the final battle for the old wagon wheel for a long time. 91st all-time meeting between these two. BYU has dominated. Backup quarterback Cooper Laga making his first start for Utah State. His pass attempt tipped, picked off by Max Tooley. Second pick six of the season for Tooley. Cougars would go up 14 to 7. The defense coming up huge for BYU, but the offense would struggle. This game would be tied at 17 at the half. So on to the third quarter, BYU had just 107 total yards in the first half, lowest since 2017. Jaron Hall connecting with Ethan Erickson. That'll work. His first career catch for the redshirt freshman Erickson. 24-17 Cougars. Next BYU drive with a four-point lead. Hall for Cody Epps. Third game in a row with a TD for Epps. Hall three TD passes, no interceptions. To the fourth quarter. Still 31-20 BYU. And BYU is back in the red zone. Christopher Brooks. He'll bring it 18 yards to the house. That gives the Cougars a 38-20 lead. They would go on to win 38-26. In the last scheduled meeting between these two rivals, BYU moving to the Big 12, as you know. Here's our Saturday Night Football game presented by Capital One. Number five, Clemson, taking on number 10, NC State. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet have the call at 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. While Pat McAfee hosts our ESPN2 telecast. All right, the Cleveland Guardians have already clinched the Central Division, but the Rays have a magic number of two, trying to clinch a spot in the playoffs. Here we go, a little Thursday night action. Bottom of eight, Guardians down one nothing. Stephen Kwan hits it deep to left. Will Brennan hustling around to score from second. And the Guardians have a little bit of life in them. We have a tie game. Two batters later, two on. Oscar Gonzalez with a single to first. G-Man Choi with the effort, but can't make the play in time. The Guardians with a run, take the lead 2-1. Look at G-Man Choi laying out. Oh, it just, no didn't stick where I needed it to. Tries to make the play and just a little too late on that. Top of nine, bases loaded, two outs. Trevor Steffen with a full count, trying to get out of the jam. The Rays need this win bad and Isak Paredes swings and pops out to shallow right. Andres Jimenez making the grab, game over. The Guardians come back to pull off the win, two to one. Well, the Seattle Mariners' magic number three as they hosted Texas wasn't easy for the Mariners. Tied at seven, we go to extras in the 10th. Cole Calhoun with a runner on, knocks in the run, and the Rangers take an eight to seven lead. In the bottom of the inning, Cal Raleigh thinks he's gonna have a hit. You'll see why he thinks he has a hit. Looked like one, but he's robbed by Calhoun. Whoa. What a play. The run still scores from third, tied at eight. It's now 9-8 Texas. They had a sack fly in the top of the 11th. We're in the bottom of the 11th now. All right, Doug Peterson facing the Eagles for the first time since being fired after the 2020 season. He's just the third different coach to be in sole possession of first place when facing the team they won a Super Bowl with, joining Bill Parcells and Mike Holmgren. Of course, he is the coach of the Jags, and these two play each other on Sunday. Let's walk through. Last season, the Jags had the worst offense in the league, averaging 15 points per game. Now they're third in scoring offense. Part of the reason, Trevor Lawrence, he's been decisive. He has the seventh fastest time to throw and is completing 80. 1% of his passes when getting rid of the ball in under two and a half seconds. That's the third highest completion percentage in the NFL. On the other side, how about Jalen Hurts? He's always been dangerous with his legs, but he's improved drastically as a pocket passer. Hurts ranks second in completion percentage from inside the pocket so far. That's a big leap from his 23rd place ranking last season. And thanks in part to those young QBs, both teams are in a better spot than they were in the preseason. The Jags and Eagles are two of the four teams that have seen their chances to make the playoffs rise by at least 30% since the preseason. This according to ESPN's Football Power Index. Well, Linda, Dak Prescott is making progress. He did not practice with the Cowboys on Thursday, but he did make a couple of light throws during the open portion of the workout. Prescott had stitches removed Monday. He continues to rehab. Mike McCarthy says there's no firm timeline for his return to throwing and to practice, but C.D. Lamb isn't in a hurry. For his QB1, that's always, you know, we're always happy for him. You know, just we don't want to speed up the recovery, I mean, the process, just because, like, we want him for the longevity of the season. Uh, but 
obviously, as he as he knows now, um, while he's out, Coop got us, and then um, you know we got we got full faith, full faith in ten, and uh, we're gonna ride this wave until four get back. All right, some more NFL news from Thursday. Jonathan Taylor missed practice with a toe injury. Adam Schefter reports it's the first practice he's missed since high school, college, and pro career. Never missed a practice. That's pretty, pretty unbelievable. Christian McCaffrey did not practice for a second straight day, dealing with a quad injury, and Dalvin Cook is nursing a shoulder injury. He did fully practice on Thursday. Coming up, the latest from Cincinnati on Tua Tonga Vailoa after a scary injury against the Bengals. Jeremy Fowler joins us next on SportsCenter. Former Cowboys tight end Gavin Escobar was found dead in an apparent rock climbing accident near Idlewild, California. He was 31 years old. The Riverside County Sheriff's Coroner's Office identified Escobar along with one other climber in the San Bernardino National Forest on Thursday. Escobar was the Cowboys' second-round pick back in 2013 and spent three seasons with them. He also played for four other teams, last playing in the NFL in 2018. Escobar had been working as a firefighter in Long Beach, California since February. He leaves behind a wife and two young children.